Revolver news is all over the Walter Wallace Jr. thug, the dead fake victim from these Philadelphia riots. Background on PDX, Portland, Southeast Portland, that that is, or East Side Portland, is, I mean. This is the end of hour two of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It's Thursday, October 29th, 2020. Stay tuned for hour three with Jesse Lee. After him, The Hake Report. You can switch channels and catch The Hake Report. TheHakeReport.com slash show. And there is a uh, town hall tonight. Check out JesseLeePeterson.com or RebuildingTheMan.com for the uh, announcement. Revolver all over this Walter Wallace Jr. thing. This is Hake News, not fake news. 6ABC did an investigation, action news investigation, local to Philadelphia. Who was Walter Wallace Jr., the man shot by the Philadelphia police on Monday afternoon evening? Revolver says, move over George Floyd. There is a new patron saint of BLM, burn, loot, murder. That's what they call BLM. Wallace was an inspiring, aspiring, not inspiring, aspiring rapper with social media accounts filled with violence. He rhymed about shooting people, including police. He was shot dead while awaiting trial for threatening to shoot up a woman in her house. I mentioned in yesterday's news that he pleaded guilty to robbery and assault in 2017, kicked down a woman's door and put a gun to her head, and he pleaded guilty to punching a police officer in the face in 2013. They had a curfew last night in Philadelphia after two nights of rioting, looting, and shootings and attacks on whites and journalists for this thug. Someone was shot, though, last night and killed, I think. Maybe a couple of people. And I think they found a van full of explosives or suspected explosives last night. Anyway, what the heck happened in Portland to Portland? In Portland, they were supporting Black Lives Matter and Antifa and destroying the city and businesses for months now, Revolver asks the question, linking to the American Sun, an article titled Portland's East Side, written by Fred Watson Jr. Decades ago, Portland was a purple state, which is a mix of Republican red and Democrat blue, with a healthy logging industry. But the city of Portland, Oregon, decided to transform its East Side. The city used undeveloped land to expand so-called affordable housing, meaning subsidized No one asked residents, and when they did, there was pushback. No reason for the development except for the fake Fair Housing Act, FHA, known as FHA, by the federal government, Titles 8 and 9, which were part of the phony Civil Rights Act of 1968 under LBJ, Lyndon Johnson. What a disgrace. And also to benefit the developer and construction firm contracts, this affordable housing push in Eastside Portland. They ruined their east side with affordable housing. Portland developed its east side for fair housing to meet the demand by victim groups demanding cheap housing. They tried it in southwest Portland, but the wealthy inhabitants there fought off development. Nice. But the east side developers in the city built townhomes, senior apartments, apartment buildings, strip malls, and stuffed them with Section 8, meaning subsidized renters, government subsidies, and minorities, which I think is redundant to Section 8. 41% of the city's east side is non-white, well above other parts of Portland. And the lying liberal media and Obama were involved in this destruction. Some liberal Oregonian writer named Brad Schmidt wrote a four-part series called Locked Out back in the day on the failures of the affordable housing initiatives and how blacks get squeezed out of good neighborhoods. The media supported Obama pushing so-called affordable fair housing. Remember, he was redistributing ghettos with HUD, Housing and Urban Development Department. The liberal media approved sob story of how blacks get locked out of good housing. Ridiculous. The federal government set a mandate to be fair in housing, which turned into building cruddy enough housing that even poor people could rent or buy. And developers saw an opportunity to build multi-housing units to cost just exactly what the Section 8 subsidy would cover. The entire program and development became a transfer of wealth, redistribution, from taxpayers to the developers and to construction firms and property owners using fake oppressed groups as the financial conduit. So sick. I'm James Hake. Now on to Jesse, our three.